Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 6, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today we got another crypto coin miner, of course, uh, nothing that terribly new with crypto coin miners, but they keep adding new uh, tricks. And this one, first of all, went after a web logic vulnerability that's about two years old. So not the most common vulnerability out there, but still apparently uh, sufficient systems out there to make it worthwhile scanning for them. And then in addition uh, to actually delete all the competition, which is standard for crypto coin miners. It also specifically disables Alibaba cloud monitoring software. If you're setting up a virtual machine in Alibaba's cloud, uh, by default, there is a specific service installed, the Ali Yun service that's then being used to monitor your virtual machine. Well, uh, you can uninstall it, and that's exactly what this uh, particular uh, script does. It downloads from Allian uh, the uninstall script and then uh, runs it. That of course uh, makes it a little bit more uh, difficult or less likely that the crypto coin miner is being uh, discovered. Other than that, it's actually not very stealthy malware. It does disable a bunch of services on the system, probably in order to, first of all, make it harder for the administrator to access the system, but then also to probably get more CPU cycles for itself. So any system used for real uh, would immediately kind of uh, be obvious that all of a sudden, for example, some of the Oracle servers and such are no longer uh, running. But uh, this looks like it's going after systems that are pretty much sort of in its default configuration, unmaintained really, but still running. It also doesn't attempt uh, to disable any other security software. We sometimes had uh, bots like this uh, that went after common endpoint security software. Nothing like this is visible here. And if any kind of anti malware would be installed, the crypto coin miner itself uh, would set off all kinds of bells while the actual download script was, at least in this form, new to VirusTotal. And Symantec has an interesting write-up about Saikeda, a Chinese APT group that uses a couple of interesting sort of living of the land style techniques in using a little bit less common software in order to help itself exploit the systems. For example, they're using the VLC media player, perfectly fine program, of course, has had vulnerabilities, but that's not uh, really what's happening here is they're using VLC's export function and then uh, Vin VNC in order to remote control the victim's machine. They're also using uh, the RAR archive tool. Now that's just sort of for compression, but also encryption, for example, which can then help with exfiltration. And uh, then some of the more common ones like WMI exec and NBT scan. Now for NBT scan, I wouldn't really call that living off the land. Uh, it's an open source tool, uh, but uh, typically not found sort of by default on systems, while WinVNC, VLC and such are tools that you may find on some systems pre-installed. The targets here are uh, non-government organizations or NGOs, so not governments themselves, but organizations that are overall sort of critical of China. In the past, we have sometimes seen these type of organizations being used a little bit as a proving ground for new tools, and that may also be the case here. And Microsoft published a blog post with uh, some of its plans for Windows 11 and some improved security techniques. Of course, it's all about AI and the cloud. We'll have to see how it actually works. But in part, it's supposed to make smarter decisions about what applications uh, to run and how to run them, but also better at detecting uh, phishing and other malicious uh, websites. 
What's sort of interesting here is that also Credential Guard will be enabled by default, a great security feature and of course already available since at least Windows 10. But note that Credential Guard can have some bad interactions with virtualization tools. So you may want to pay attention to that if you're running into issues with future versions of Windows 11. And Mandiant has an update on Fin7. Now, Fin7 has been around for quite a while. Initially, they sort of made a name for themselves with uh, some of these attacks where they sent phishing emails, in particular in the hospitality industry. But, well, since then, they have gotten better. They have gotten faster, even though they're still relying on a lot of the technologies they have been using for years. What's sort of a little bit new and different here is that they're more relying on support supply chain attacks where essentially they're altering, for example, links on websites to download legitimate tools that will then download trojanized versions of these tools. And then maybe a little bit less phishing, but have others do the work for them by just relying on reused passwords, which of course continues to be a huge problem. Well, then we also have updates for Firefox and Google Chrome. No Saturday, as far as I know, but be aware that for Google Chrome, we are now up to version 100. Haven't really heard any issues about that. And that has been happening for the last week or so. Firefox still at version 99. Thanks for listening. And that's it for today. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.